yeah. Uh, so let's try to be even more helpful, I think. So let's talk about the sorts of things which are not evidence. So a good one for me is hearsay. Yeah. I, I, uh, so this is true in law. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hearsay is not direct evidence. Let's characterize it like that. And um, I, I, I want to highlight this because I see it's an increasing problem. So it's an increasing problem because of social media. It's even a problem in, 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 cl in classrooms. Um, so, I mean, let's define hearsay. So hearsay is something that you've heard uh, from another party and now you are repeating as evidence. So if I, if, if I hear my friend telling me of what they heard from a third party, from my perspective, that is hearsay. Mm -hmm. But the person who's telling me this is not an eyewitness. An eyewitness is preferable to hearsay. So if my friend tells me, I saw X commit that crime, my friend is an eyewitness. But if my friend says to me, well, I heard that X committed that crime, that's hearsay. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's an inferior form of evidence. Now, it, it might be evidence. Yeah. It, it's not necessarily um, inadmissible right. as evidence but it's inferior evidence it's hearsay and hearsay is particularly problematic because it can be misinterpreted there are now now there is a, another degree of separation mm -hmm. between you the consumer of the information and the actual source and there can be misinterpretation between the nodes mm -hmm. uh, now now we have a signal problem so mm -hmm. hearsay across nodes is going to add noise and misinterpretations so i hit the hearsay may come from a reliable witness, but the hearsay itself is in misinterpreted. So by the time it reaches me, it's no longer the same as the original observation. Now, uh, what is really problematic in social media is people treating hearsay as data. Mm -hmm. So they will say, I've heard this is true, it is true. Yeah. We are questioning the quality of the original source or the possibility that something's been lost in the signal. Mm -hmm. But it's really, really important that we um, we are mindful all the time about what hearsay is, yeah. because I think um, it's got to the point in my perception, my impression, it's got to the point where it's normal to consider hearsay as evidence, as proof. Actually, oh. uh, you see this in social media where, so you know, my friend says COVID nineteen is a conspiracy by the government to control, you know, whatever. Right. So that's that's a really, really perverse, really destructive, really yep. unjustifiable form of hearsay. Yeah. Um, and in the good old days when people were taught what hearsay is, uh, particularly by reference to law, yeah. uh, it, it, it was it was not socially acceptable to indulge in hearsay. And now now I think because of social media, particularly it's sort of socially acceptable. And by the way, we should have an episode of social media the the <laughs> <laughs> evidentiary and theoretical problems with that that are that are amplified by social media so let's make a, a yeah. verbal note that we're going to have that episode too so well, uh, bottom line is let's be mindful about hearsay right uh and i and i want to push back and kind of maybe clarify what you were thinking about in in terms of hearsay because it sounds like you were talking about hearsay in a fairly uh specific context in the sense of appeals to uh, having heard a claim or having heard an observation from somebody else. Uh, and I want to kind of suggest that uh, you can convert hearsay, which is clearly, um, I think that the general connotation is, is, is bad, um, into evidence that can be relatively strong. Uh, and let me give you an example. So I think, uh, for example, uh, the evidence now that we're getting from hospitals about some of the uh, unexpected uh, symptoms of COVID. So we thought originally, I think a while ago, that it was a mostly a respiratory disease, but now we're hearing about some of these, these terrible other, other symptoms that people are having. Um, and hospitals, I think, are collecting evidence uh, from patients. So doctors uh, generally go talk to patients. They also perform tests, but they, uh, a lot of the symptoms, I think, are uh, written down in conversation with a patient. And so that, uh, I, I think, is an example of where hearsay is scaffolded. Uh, so the doctor has a system by which they're probing the patient for information. And so I wouldn't even classify that as, as hearsay, right? I would classify that as a 
uh, investigation that the doctor is is summarizing. Um, yeah, for, for me, that's not hearsay because you're if you're asking the patient what they sense or feel. Yeah, that's not hearsay because you're, you're asking the direct observer. But what would be hearsay is if you uh, if you had a patient who is unconscious and cannot respond to you, then you ask their friend uh, what you think the patient's symptoms were. Now you're dealing with hearsay, which might yeah. be the best you can do. But you have to be mindful that it is inferior evidence than asking the patient directly. Yeah, um, and I do think though that there is cases in which um, that can be a little bit dangerous. Perhaps uh, uh, I mean uh, we talked about the uh, the fetishization of, of big data earlier, um, and it feels like maybe there's a similar problem. Maybe that you're seeing more of is uh, in this kind of quest for primary sources. Um, and so, yes, hearsay is not good as much as possible. We should be, we should be trying to go to the source. Uh, but like you said, if, if your friend is unconscious, um, it's probably better uh, to, to ask somebody who was observing the patient than to, to not ask at all. Um, mm -hmm. If I want to learn something about um, the current, uh, uh, I don't know, the, the current state of our, of our galaxy, um, it would probably be much better for me to um, go out and read a review uh, that was published in Nature or a review that was published in, uh, in a magazine by astronomers whom I trust uh, than it would be for me uh, to say, oh, look, I, I want um, all of the terabytes of data from all the telescopes because I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to do the analysis uh, myself. So I, I, I feel like you're, you're probably also seeing that too, where there's a, um, a call to, to dive into the primary sources um, under the assumption that the more primary you get, the more hands-on you get with the data, the better the quality of the evidence. But oftentimes uh, that actually just, I think, exacerbates the problem uh, because we're very prone to biases. We may not always have the technical tools or the context uh, to conduct that analysis properly. Yeah. And uh, frankly, there's just too much going on for us to examine each piece of data individually before, before doing anything. Yeah, so I think our, our discussion is getting really interesting now and probably yeah. most useful to, to the general public. So I think there's, there's two things going on. So there's, there's, I'm going to characterize it as confirmation of hearsay, the potential to yeah. confirm hearsay as evidence. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other problem you're talking about is interpretation as yeah. um, something to be mindful of uh, where uh, actually what we think of as evidence is not necessarily evidence if it is biased by our interpretation. Mm -hmm. So, so that is that is where subjectivity can corrupt the data. Yeah, and um, we may have a subjective bias to assume that we've proven it yeah. without being mindful that what we've proven it with is our particular interpretation, without considering whether it, there is a different interpretation. Yeah. So now, to, now to go back one let's clarify that we can make use of hearsay under certain conditions. So we could confirm the hearsay and make it evidence, right? So, so I said earlier, hearsay is a form of evidence, it's just inferior. Yeah. So we would want to confirm whether it is good evidence or not. So give a simple example in, in, in law. So mm -hmm. say you are being tried for murder, yeah. And somebody says, uh, well, I heard that he told somebody that he murdered that person. Yeah. Now that's hearsay. And you would not want to be convicted on that hearsay. That would yeah. be, that would be bad justice. Yeah. Now the investigators can say, well, let's go find that person. Mm -hmm. If we can't find that person. Let's go try to find an eyewitness to the event that this hearsay is talking about. Now we can find an eyewitness that would be better than the hearsay, but it would confirm the hearsay. So we can go out looking to confirm hearsay. In that case, we're strengthening the evidence. Then in that case, the hearsay actually ceases to be hearsay because then we find an eyewitness who confirms the hearsay and we're going to go with the eyewitness. Yeah. So we're actually improving the quality of the evidence. Um, so it is not the case that hearsay is not evidence, it is evidence, but it is inferior evidence. And there's other things, other tricks we can engage in and try to confirm that evidence. But yeah. now to take it the other way, uh, we can disc 
disqualify hearsay. So say, imagine, this is why hearsay can be really problematic. Maybe somebody has a motivated bias to say something bad about us. So if somebody's saying, well, I heard that he told somebody else that he killed that person, maybe that, that, that source of the hearsay just hates us, just wants us in jail. Maybe they're a commercial competitor. Maybe they've got some other grievance against us. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't want to be convicted by hearsay because the hearsay can be corrupted. Yeah. So then we need to confirm things like the credibility of the witness. Mm -hmm. So that's why in a court of law, if somebody says to you, says, it comes along to the court and says, well, I saw the crime being committed. It's perfectly fair in a judicial process for the defense yeah. to cross examine that witness and say, are you a credible witness? Do you have any biases? Do yeah. you hate the accused? You know, this is where we interrogate the qualities of the source themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's important to know. Now, uh, I think those uh, parameters of hearsay and eyewitness testimony or direct observation in a general sense, direct observation, those are probably pretty clear the way I've set them up. I think it's less clear the problem of interpretation where mm -hmm. there are too many people, again, particularly on social media, saying this is the evidence yeah. without being mindful that actually what they think is evidence is just a subjective interpretation of the data. Yeah. So somebody could come along and say, um, let's take a simple bias like a proximity bias. Mm -hmm. so somebody could say, well, I, my friend had COVID-19 and it was mild. Yeah. And then they say, uh, you know, that is evidence that COVID-19 is, mm -hmm. is mild. But hang on, you've interpreted it as mild. Perhaps your friend didn't show you all the symptoms because they, they were embarrassed to, yeah. to, to reveal how badly they were affected. They, maybe they were embarrassed to admit the mental health problems associated with it. So you have now have an interpretation problem, um, which, you're th which, which you are assuming is... Um, you, you, if you're not, if you are not mindful of your interpretation problem, you're assuming that your observation is clear and definitive and beyond reproach. But we all need to be mindful as observers that we are all interpreters, and we should be. To go back to the lessons from hearsay, we should look for confirmation. Like that could be as simple as me saying to you. Um, this is my interpretation of what's going on in the COVID data. What do you think? Yeah. And then you can confirm or deny my interpretation. That gives accountability and keeps me honest, keeps me humble, and all the other good things about science that we've discussed before. Well, I think that's, um, you bring up so many, so many points that we'll have to, we'll have to do some more episodes on them. But uh, it feels like uh, two things that, that come to mind uh, from what you said. First is falsifiability. Uh, so we talked about falsifiability earlier, and uh, it feels like when we are making claims, whether they are making uh, interpretations directly from data or making uh, interpretations of things that I've heard other people say, um, it feels like a general principle uh, that we and uh, the public and really everyone uh, should be striving for is to make claims as much as possible that are falsifiable. So if I say, um, I heard this and this from this person at that time, um, maybe you could go and track down that person um, yeah. and, uh, and figure out whether that's, uh, that's true or not. And so you were talking about court of, uh, court of law, right? People do do this. Um, you do this in most investigations and um, it's potentially also uh, analogous to what we've heard a lot of with, uh, with contact tracing uh, in, a, in a slightly different context. So falsifiability seems uh, really, really important. And the second is uh, context. Uh, so I, I think uh, that is something that you also touched on, which I think is is highly important, uh, especially from my perspective as, as, as a, uh, working with data and, and things of that sort, uh, is that without context, uh, that's when hearsay becomes particularly dangerous. Uh, so hearsay can be just another piece in the pie and uh, it might actually be helpful. It might give you some sort of interesting perspective. Uh, there's a, a an interesting story I was told by somebody, so now I'm, I'm uh, engaging in hearsay, uh, about uh, somebody trying to make a decision and uh, they had somebody in the group and the, the group, they were trying to build this new car park and the person in the group happened to be an ex-car thief. 
Um, so he was, he was telling all of these wonderful stories to somebody who was able to pass along and they made a, made a, made a safer car park. So there are examples in which hearsay might be uh, useful, it might be good evidence, uh, if it's uh, also maybe bolstered by security experts and, and things of that nature. But on the other hand, um, I, I think hearsay out of context uh, leads, to, uh, leads to many problems. Uh, yeah, so we, we you're, you're right, context is really important and it, uh, let's explore that because it's yeah. so important. It, and it, it's, it's a, an, again, it's a problem that is amplified in social media. Mm -hmm. Things are taken out of context for reasons of bandwidth or reasons of word restriction. So think of a tweet yeah. A tweet has a word restriction on it. So uh, often a message is reduced without the context or the caveats of the other things that actually provide the true meaning. So let's just clarify what we mean by context. So um, let me go back to aggression. So in social science, we're often interested in aggression. So aggression between states, nation states, yeah. aggression between um, individuals uh, so within the family. So, so spousal abuse and child abuse. Aggression has a theoretical role at all of those levels of analysis. Mm -hmm. Now, we could find an observation of a person acting aggressively. Yeah. So, so imagine we have video of somebody acting aggressively, and we say that we post that video on social media, that this little clip for a second or two, mm -hmm. where somebody's really angry and acting really aggressively, and we say, see, this person is aggressive and they need yeah. to be locked up. They're a danger to society. To society. Yeah. But wait a minute. Maybe that video is taken out of context. Maybe that person is reacting to threat. Yeah. Maybe they're being mugged at the time they're, they're acting um, in an agitated, violent way. Yeah. Maybe it's not aggression at all. It's defensiveness. Yeah. Maybe it's panic. Now, there's an interpretation problem as mm. well as, the, as taking something out of context. So this is where social media can be really, really dangerous, where things are taken out of context, and then you interpret what you want out of the little bit that you selected. So here's the selection bias. Yeah. You select the little bit that you want to, to serve your agenda. Well, it's uh, so, interesting you mentioned that because yeah. uh, uh, a long time ago, I was uh, working with a group uh, that worked on kind of how do you change people's minds? And... Uh, the big, uh, one of the big things that uh, often changes people's minds is surprise. And so you say, okay, that's great, but why is that bad? Well, it's bad because uh, what is surprising? What is surprising is most often the outliers. So if, if somebody tells me uh, uh, that there's an elephant the size of a, of a tadpole, I'm gonna say, wow. Um, and uh, this is the social media phenomenon. I take that and I share it and I say, well, mom, did you know, or dad, did you know, or friends, did you know that uh, there's an elephant the size of a tadpole? So it, it feels like social media by design, uh, amplifies, and we'll talk about amplification maybe on another, another episode as well, but amplifies the uh, extremities and doesn't amplify the norm. And um, what we're really looking for with hearsay and context is the norm, not so much the extremities. The context, uh, yes, yeah, so I agree with you. We're, we're looking for the norm when for comparative purposes. Yeah. So there's a context uh, for an individual case, the context is the wider population of cases. So that's one form of context. Yeah. Um, I was also talking about context in the form of the conditions or the situation in which the behavior occurred. So, so take aggression. If, if aggression is justified in order to prevent a threat, mm -hmm. um, that's a different context or situation. Yeah or set of conditions to if somebody is being aggressive because they just want your money. Yeah. So if you're being aggressive towards a terrorist who is attacking and killing people and mm -hmm. you're aggressive in response to that terrorist, that's a justifiable form of aggression in that context. Mm -hmm. so, we, so in law, we talk about that as legitimate killing. So yeah. you can, in the law and criminal law, you can kill people. It's just when you're defending life or liberty uh, in, in uh, another justifiable, forms of self-protection or the protection of society, uh, uh, others, others of society other than yourself. Right. So you, there's a context that can justify certain behaviors that would not be justifiable in other contexts. So mm -hmm. here I'm talking about context as the situation or the conditions mm -hmm. under which you are behaving. And um, social media by 
encouraging selectivity yeah. and by encouraging narrowing of the observation and selective cutting of the observation, cutting out the bit mm -hmm. that uh, allows you, that confirms your bias. Yeah. So we have selection bias and confirmation bias as motivating biases towards being selective in what we take out of context. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this speaks to um, the interpretation bias uh, and the general advice to our listeners is when you're presented with what people claim to be evidence, yeah. you should be thinking to yourself, well, hang on, what, are the, what could be the justifiable context for this that would actually refute the mm. interpretation that I've been given? Yeah. And, we, and, and, and that leads to things like framing effects too, where we've said before, when you're given data, be mindful of how it is framed to you. Because take a lethality rate for COVID-19. So I've just framed it because I've given you a lethality rate. I could have given you a survivability rate. Yeah. I framed it. It's the, the mathematics are going to be the same. Mm -hmm. I'm framing it verbally in, in, in contradictory ways, lethality, survivability, lethality, survivability. So I'm framing it. So, be, so our advice is be aware of context, be aware, aware of interpretation bias, yes. be aware of how it's framed to you, and be aware of the source. Like, is it hearsay? Is it direct observation? Uh, is there a theoretical justification for the measures that are being used? Is it being correctly analyzed? Yeah. Uh, and is it evidence that is consistent with, and to what extent is it consistent with your expectation? Very well said. I think uh, that uh, captures the things that we should be aware of um, quite, um, not comprehensively, that would be uh, not probabilistic, but- uh, That's why we have, <laughs> and that's why we have other episodes. Well said. Indeed. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you so much, Bruce. Uh, I, this was fascinating, and I uh, think we've uh, sparked the uh, the need for further discussion on uh, things along the lines of machine learning and social media. So I'm uh, yeah. engaged to debate those topics. Great discussion, Aditya. Thank you, and I really look forward to exploring these the issues we mentioned further in future yeah. episodes. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you. We are the Risky Scientists. We are. Goodbye. Goodbye.